Hello folks, Kirby Sora here with part three of three of the Terra Crit record route tutorial. Um, diving right in, something I should have mentioned in the last part is that I built my deck for Zack in a very specific way such that I would know that I would be ending that fight with uh, Magnera queued up. That's really important uh, because right at the beginning of this fight, there's a wave of floods that we just absolutely need to get into a magnet before any of them go into the ground. There's there's no backup for, for that failing. Um, I had a run the other day that lost 50 seconds off uh, on it because of the fact that I couldn't get those floods in, into, uh, into my magnet. So it's really important. Um, but let's dive in. Uh, right at the beginning of the fight, we're going to walk forward and immediately fire off that magnet, then go into Aqua D-Link. And then when the last one dies, right when it dies, uh, you want to fire off another magnet. So long. Then Thunder, Mind Square, Finisher, just like this. And then one bird will survive, so we'll go and we'll pick him off. Just hit some commands. Then Magnet, Thunder, put this guy in an arrow. Uh, and you can use the... Uh, people probably know about the Ignite glitch. If you fire off an Ignite and Target Switch uh, while you're doing it, you'll you'll hit both enemies with an Ignite. Um, so we've got two of these gorillas uh, ignited now. Uh, we don't need to ignite the last one. Uh, we have three surges. We can use two of them on this guy. The one that we hit with an arrow is going to die automatically uh, because he doesn't have a lot of health right now. And then the final one we can just uh, take out with our final surge. So let's do that one, two. You see, he just died automatically. And then we can finish the fight, and we're all set. Moving along, we want to kill this dude, uh, just to make sure our CP is fine. Um, Actually, I might want to kill one more thing. Um, because I should have gotten a level on the Magnera there. And I didn't, so that makes me a little bit nervous. Um, we'll kill this guy. It's probably unnecessary, but... Just in case. You can Sonic Impact over these gaps, I just messed it up. Here in this room, we're going to do some really funky movements. I'm going to trap this wave in a magnet, then go into Cindy D-Link and use Enchanted Step to get up here. It's fine. As soon as you land, go out of D-Link. And we're going to make our way over to this side so that we can pick up our solo. And we're gonna put that in our deck right now. We're gonna replace the Thunder Surges with Fire Dashes, move this one down, and our solo. And we are going to use our solo to put Peter Pan in his place like never before. This fight's pretty easy. Starts off with an Ignite, then a full combo. Two hits and two Ignite. Two more hits into Gold Rush. Hit, Ignite, hit, ours, and he'll be dead by the end of this command. There you go. Really slick boss fight. Very satisfying, very easy. I guess I lied earlier when I said Symphony Master was the easiest boss, if you count that as a boss, at least. Okay, Jelly Swarm. 
Uh, so at the beginning of this, I like to uh, Sonic Impacts over here. Um, it just gives you a little bit of protection if um, the jellies go right after you at the beginning of the fight. Um, they won't be able to do that um, if you're Sonic Impact. And we're just going in and out of Aqua Dueling using our magnets. It's pretty self-explanatory, pretty easy. And there we go. A lot of cutscenes and pop-ups to skip here as we head into Endgame. Alright, we're going to do our final menu. We're going to do some melds, fire dash, ignite. We're going to put a fleeting crystal on that if you have one. Now, we have a lot of Fleet and Crystals here. That's pretty rare, actually. Um, usually, you're, you're lucky even to have three. Um, obviously, the more attack haste you have, the better. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm actually not going to use the Fleet and Crystal, just because the most common scenario you're going to be in for Endgame is to have three attack hastes. So let's just go and create that environment. Um, and then finally, we're going to make an Aroga, we're going to put a Pulsing Crystal on that, and that's going to give a second chance. And we're going to fill our deck full of Surges, and then the Aroga, and we're good to go. Headed first to Keyblade Graveyard, and then to Land of Departure for the Ericus fight. Now this is a really difficult fight, especially without Once More. We have to just be a little bit more careful here than normal. Um, the strat is basically the same as it's always been. It's just, you know, it, it's just a little bit harder because we don't have a cure in our deck and we don't have Once More, so. Let's start with a combo just so our surges can reload. And I like to um, fill up my health every single time um, I get hit, um, just for safety, frankly, um, because he can fail to attack you when you want him to, um, and that can put you in a situation to get DM'd. So it's just more reliable to do it like this. When he does the long combo, if you're up against a wall, that can be kind of dangerous because he can get behind you, and without once more, uh, that can kill you. Um, so you want to be really specific about where you do your counter hammer there. It can um, keep you out of jams. Um, this is not good luck. Um, okay, so the situation I'm in right now is really bad. I'm at 1 HP. I can't take another hit. Uh, but also he he fell out of the loop. So I'm gonna try to get him back in by doing the finisher. This is a little bit dangerous. He can counter this in a way that will kill me, but he, he probably won't. And hopefully he'll attack me in a way that I can uh, get a heal off afterwards. So let's see what happens. He did not. So now I'm just gonna wait and hope. Yeah, okay. Wow, Ericus. Oh, now you're being nice. And I'm just gonna do a counter hammer here because I've got a lot of surges on cooldown. Just gonna give them some extra time. Uh, I dodged away there because, for whatever reason, you can't immediately surge him when he's doing those dashes. Uh, you gotta dodge away first and, and wait for him to have done the second one. It's just a weird little thing. Probably should have counter hammered there. Just do an extra guard. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have done that uh, surge at the end. That was actually that I could have died there, but um, but yeah, uh, that went honestly really terribly. But that's Ericus. You just 
the fight's only going to be as good as, as he lets it be, so. We move on. Headed into Keyblade Graveyard for our final three fights. We want, we want Fire Surge to be queued up here. These Twisters are not really of any risk. Uh, Terra is just, he's fast enough to outrun them. And we're heading into Venetus. An incredibly unfair fight. I actually think this fight is probably the worst fight uh, for the Once More list route. I think it stretches the concept of skipping Once More right to its limits, because MX can teleport right next to you and immediately start doing a combo and you will die. There is nothing you can do about it. So, um, all you can really do is hope that that doesn't happen. Um, one potential way to mitigate it, although I'm not even sure if this is true, um, so the strat here is to uh, go into Peter Pan D-Link and do uh, air combo hits, single air combo hits on Vanitas. And if you jump a little bit higher than you're used to, it feels to me at least like you have a better chance to hit MX out of that combo if he decides to teleport next to you than you would otherwise. It It's not like a perfect solution to the issue, but you know, give it a shot. So I'm going to go into Peter Pan D-Link. I'm going to hit Vanitas once, and then I'm going to kind of wait to see what uh, MX does. There he goes. And that's the best way to deal with that. If he does the combo and you see it happen, just um, air slide past him and then hit Vanitas. You can cancel the um, ending uh, animation of an air slide by um, successfully getting a uh, air combo hit on an enemy. So that's that can be handy. And then once he's done that, you're 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 safe. He he's gonna probably leave us alone now. He'll probably teleport away and leave us alone for the rest of the fight. So now we can just take our time. I mean he might shoot projectiles at us or so Ooh, wow, okay. I guess I was lying. <laughs> um but we're good to set this up, so we wanna do like a seven to eight shot lock. Unfortunately, Vanitas teleported away, and there we go. And that'll be fine. Mistimed it a little bit, but that's fine. That fight is not actually really any different than it's been. It's just way more dangerous than it's been. So, be wary. Alright, MX. This one's pretty simple. Uh, the name of the game here is not whiffing any of your surges. If you're perfect about it, um, one, two, three, Solemn, you'll get a Firestorm finisher here, which you can use, not in this situation, but in other situations. It depends on what attack he does. Um, hopefully he'll give us a chance to take a look at that later. Um, this is another thing that just comes with practice, um, positioning yourself such that all of your surges are going to land. It, it's the kind of thing, it, it doesn't seem very consistent at first, but once you spend some time with this fight and the next fight, you'll you'll start to get pretty good at, at positioning for those things. Alright, so he's going to teleport away, let's see what happens. Alright, he's doing this, we can hit him with the Firestorm off of that. Didn't do that much damage, it can do more, uh, it's a little bit luck based. Here I'm going to do something kind of funky. I'm going to trap him in an arrow and then I'm going to hit him, which is going to make him not teleport away, and I can just um, switch switch to Surges, skip a cycle. Okay, here we are. It's Terranort. Okay, so uh, this is the super combo. Um, the whole route is built around this strat. It is very, very challenging. 
Um, fortunately, it's not... Well, a part of it is luck-based. But once you've got the combo started, it, it's, it's not luck-based. It's just incredibly specific and tight. A very, very high skill check. Um, there's a couple different scenarios that you can be in and still manage to do a successful super combo, depending on like what command style you are in at the time. I'm not really going to go into any of that stuff. Today, I might do an extended like 30 or 40 minute video on Terranord itself. There's a lot to talk about with this fight. Uh, so today, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk about the, the most common scenario, um, which is that when you go to execute the super combo, you're, um, you're doing it with a completely bottomed out command meter. You're just regular Terra. You're not in a command style. That's, that's probably the most guaranteed way uh, for, for this to go well. But um, in order to even set up the super combo, we need to um, take him down to just over two and a half bars of health. So let's get into that. Starting here in phase one, we're looking to deflect volleys, or we're looking for him to do his Arsolan attack. We'll talk about that uh, if and when he does. There we go. Surge, and then Sonic Impact away, and then Solemn. And then this is not consistent, but sometimes, actually most of the time if I'm being honest, um, you can get an R Solemn off right here um, by setting it up the way you just saw. Surge, uh, dash away into a Sonic Impact, and then do the Solemn. And as long as you see him like kind of stagger back like he just did, uh, you that's how you know you got it. Um, does a lot of damage. Oh, and this is very good. Um, so you've got like a 50-50 chance at the end of this Solemn for him to immediately go into this uh, long volley combo. Even if he's in phase one, even though this is, a this is an attack that's exclusive to phases two and three, uh, if you, it be for some reason, if, if you get that Solemn off, he can start doing this even if he's in phase one. He is in phase two right now, but, but he could do this in phase one. And you just want to dodge around this stuff and then deflect it. And I'm going to hold off. I could get a Surge off there. I could actually get two off there, probably. But I don't want to go into a uh, command style at this point. So I'm just going to keep my distance for now. And I'm going to let my meter bottom out a little bit. And he's doing this again. I actually can't deflect this at the end because it will do too much damage. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, do Surges instead. I'm going to do two. I'm going to try to do two Thunder Surges. Yeah, there we go. And that's actually like a perfect amount of HP. You're fine to pull off the super combo if he's got a little bit more health than this, but this is a really good spot to be in. You, he just can't be under two and a half bars, or he's got a chance to either heal or DM, and that's not what you want. The whole point of this is to skip the DM and to skip all the healing. Okay, so at this point, we want to see another volley. Uh, we have to wait for it. This is the luck-oriented part of, of the fight. There's not a ton we can do to bait, to bait that out. And, uh, and yeah, once, once he fires that off, it's, it's super combo time. I guess I'll just talk through the super combo now. I won't be able to pause it all while I'm doing it. So the way it works is you want to dodge the volleys just like you've seen me do two times now. Um, deflect the last part of it, keeping actually a, a pretty decent amount of distance between you and him. You you would think you would want to be as close as possible, but you actually don't. Uh, having said that, you if you're too far away, he'll uh, he he won't stagger to the volleys. He'll recover from from that attack before um before he staggers. So the the amount of distance is really key. But once he does get hit by the volleys, he'll he'll be knocked back. You want to slide towards him. Uh, surge into one hit into a Roga, which will put him in the air. Then when he lands, you're going to do another Surge. All of these are Thunder Surges, by the way. Um, once you do that Surge, you'll go into Thunderbolt. You're going to take a couple of steps back after that. Very tight to do that. Um, do another Surge. Uh, and then you can do three hit combos. You can do two three hit combos and then one final single hit into Arsolum, 
and um, and he'll die at the end of it. So I just want to lead him around here. You don't want to bait out any other attack, you just want this to happen. I don't like how close he is to the wall, but it might not matter. I mean, we'll find out soon. One, two, and you can do more hits than that, but I, I just, I know the fight well enough to know that he was gonna die if I started ours there, so there you go, that's Terranor. Minus the pausing, that was actually a, like, a, a Taz quality Terranor, that was extremely good. Like I said, um, I'll probably make a, a, a bigger video on just all the different things that can happen in Terranort. It's a very complex fight. You can pull off the, the super combo even if you are in a command style like Critical Impact or Thunderbolt or even Blade Charge. Um, but it just, it, it takes a lot of practice. It's very difficult. All those situations are kind of dangerous. Uh, there's also another setup, uh, which is entirely luck-based, which I like to call the super duper combo, uh, that can play out. Um, you can actually check, my current PB has that in it if you want to just see what it looks like. Um, but, uh, it, it's not the kind of thing that I would expect, ever expect to see in a PB attempt but it's something that I hope to cover later on in a more complete video. So this is it. Uh, that's Terra Crit. Um, very hard, extremely satisfying. I don't know that there's that much more to say. Uh, there's a couple things that, this is the first time I've ever made a tutorial like this. There's a couple things that I, I probably could have gone more in depth into. There's probably a bunch of things that I went too in depth into. Um, I'm going to leave my uh, Discord in the uh, description. Please feel free to send me any questions uh, about uh, the the run that you might have, or you know, if there's anything that I forgot to cover or anything that's confusing. Please feel free to reach out. Uh, I absolutely love talking about this game in this category in particular, so it, it's not a it's not a burden at all. Frankly, it would probably make my day. So um, please, please feel free to reach out. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. I, I want to give another shout out to Texas Grandma and Pessilist, uh, who, you know, the, the three of us have, have done a lot of work to get this route um, to the place it's at. And, uh, and, and yeah, I, I, I really hope that this tutorial uh, gets people uh, into uh, running, running this route. I, I think... I, I think I think people will find a lot of satisfaction in getting good at this. I, I know I have. It, it's it's a really challenging top level speed run. Frankly, if if you enjoy gambling, um, it's it's fun on that level too. Um, although even at this point, if you're going for record, you know you can afford for a couple of things to go wrong. You can have a slow mirror. You can have a slow Sparky. You know, you can lose, you can have a not exactly optimal Terran art and, and still record at this point, at least. So, you know, that's another thing that I think is kind of fun about the route is like, you know, mixing and like, where can I afford to lose time? Where can I not afford? Like how many of the luck-based things do I need to go right? I, I think there's a lot of fun to that and, and I, I don't know. Maybe I'm selling a little too hard. I, I would really love it if 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 people got into into this route. And if anybody wants any assistance in doing that, please feel free to reach out. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, uh, happy runs.